And the U.S. stock index futures pointed to a lower open amid concerns of increased violence on the Israeli-Gaza border. At around 4.15 a.m. Eastern time, Dow futures fell 59 points, indicating a lower implied open of 49 points. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 futures also indicated a lower start to the session for their respective markets. The moves in pre-market trade followed an escalation in violence on Monday at the Israeli-Gaza border on the day the U.S. opened its embassy in Jerusalem after President Donald Trump moved it from Tel Aviv. More earnings are scheduled to be released in the U.S. Home Depot and uh, Vodafone are poised to release its latest figures before the opening bell. In economic data, April retail sales numbers are due at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. In Asia, slight gains seen during the U.S. session failed to translate into an advance in stocks today, with major markets in the region finishing the day in negative territory. The Nikkei 225 hovered around the flat line before closing lower by 0.21 percent. Gains seen in banking stocks with Mitsubishi UFJ Group up 1.71 percent were offset by declines in the real estate sector, among others. Over in Seoul, the benchmark cost speed declined 0.71 percent as technology stocks weighed. In Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index lost 0.88 percent after notching its six straight sessions of gains on Monday. Heavily weighted financials and technology shares were a drag on the benchmark, with Tencent down 2.72 percent before the market closed. Mainland markets closed higher following the release of mixed China data, which showed industrial output topped expectations while retail sales missed forecasts. The Shanghai Composite advanced 0.58% and the Shenzhen Composite rose 0.91%. In Sydney, the S&P ASS 200 is 0.61%, with declines seen in all but the Information Technology Sub-Index. And back here... In Africa, Britain's Competition and Markets Authority says it would examine whether a takeover of minor Lomi by South Africa's Sembaya Steel Water would lessen competition. The £285 million deal would create the world's number two platinum producer. Precious metals miner Sembaya Steel Water made an all share offer for London listed Lomi in December. The company said at the time that the transaction was subject to approval from shareholders and competition clearance in Britain, South Africa and possibly the European Union. Cash Trapped Lonely is the world's third largest platinum producer and Symbia Steel Water is the fourth largest. Symbia has said it will not recommend the transaction to shareholders if Lonely fails to retain a positive cash balance by the time the deal is scheduled to close in the second half of the year. On a trial of top executives from all majors ENI and Shell over alleged corruption in Nigeria kicked off on Monday with a brief procedural hearing and a decision to re-adjourn next month. At the next hearing set for June 20, the Milan court said it would assess requests from third parties, including a series of international non-profit organizations, to join the case. The long-running graft case revolves around the 2011 purchase by ENI and Shell of Nigeria's OPL245 offshore oil field for about $1.3 billion. Milan prosecutors allege bribes were paid to win the license to explore an oil block that holds an estimated 9 billion barrels of oil, but which has never entered into production or the accused have denied any wrongdoing. Ethiopian Airlines, Sub-Saharan Africa's biggest carrier by revenue, says it will buy more planes to step up its already rapid expansion and pass an earlier target of 120. It plans to establish half a dozen international offshoots before the end of the year as Africa's biggest carrier steps up efforts to dominate markets across the continent. Ethiopian will take equity stakes in new operators in Zambia, Chad, Mozambique and Gambia while helping to manage existing carriers in Equatorial Guinea and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The growth has been very uh, attractive, remarkable growth. I mean, by any standard in the industry, you know, airlines are now growing 5 to 6%, maximum 10% in any part of the world. 
but uh, we are growing 20% plus. So uh, this is impressive by any standard in the industry. Going forward, when the competition gets, gets tougher and tougher, it will be difficult for us to compete only with one hub in Addis. So expanding the hub is putting the competition one step ahead of the curve. Uh, otherwise, we will be very challenged by the Gulf carriers with one hub here in Addis and another hub for Emirates in Dubai will be apple to apple to compete. But if we take the hub, the, the hubs from Ad, the hub from Addis to multiple hubs, it puts us in a better uh, competitive advantage. And after the break, we'll look at LPG consumption in Nigeria to stay with us.